John Rondo, the first career go-ahead field goal in the final 10 seconds of the fourth quarter overtime. He previously was 0 for 11 in his career. It's his first buzzer beater, and wouldn't you know, he does it in Boston. As soon as LeBron speaks to the press, we'll bring it to you live here on SportsCenter. For James, it's been a busy day. Earlier, he and Giannis chose up sides for the All-Star game. With the first pick, I am going with uh, Kevin Durant. Mm. The first pick, Team Yaz, I'm going to go with Steph Curry. So the Golden State boys are off the board. I'm going to go with Kyrie Irving. That's a great pick right there. Giannis, I don't know if there's a bad pick out there. I'm going to go with James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, Clay Thompson, Anthony Davis. Champion rules does not apply on All-Star Weekend. <laughs> Third pick, I'm going to go with uh, LeBron's guy, Ben Simmons. <laughs> I'm proposing Russell Westbrook for Ben Simmons trade. I'll do it. Be honest to trade everybody on his bench for Anthony Davis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, All-Star Weekend is always a treat, so looking forward to it. So the All-Star picking via Skype or something. LeBron had the first pick, as you heard. He chose Kevin Durant, who was salty in his last press conference. Uh, Steph Curry goes right away to the other side. Kyrie Irving gets his old teammate. Joel Embiid goes to Giannis. LeBron's final two stars, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden. Giannis took Paul George and Kemba Walker. And then for LeBron's first reserve, he goes to the guy who didn't go to the Lakers, Anthony Davis. Giannis asks if that constitutes tampering. Then LeBron made that Westbrook for Simmons trade after the trade deadline. Russell Westbrook, he's wearing his usual uniform. The OKC Thunder, he would wear out the rim tonight. Second quarter, Westbrook. Had some trouble, gets a steal, the wide open slam, uh, not exactly. And look at Westbrook, like, he wants to blame the rim, right? He's checking the rim. What's wrong with the rim? Couldn't possibly be me. Uh, yeah, now the rim looks straight. All right, third quarter, Westbrook got revenge on the rim. The steal, and this time, He's going to drop in the dunk so he doesn't miss and celebrates. That rim is cool. Well, that checked out. Watch it again. This is more of a gentle two-handed finish. I'll just leave this right here, if you will. The round two victory against the rim. In the third, Thunder up 70-59 on their way. Jeremy Grant in the paint. No. Westbrook, he does everything. Gets the board, lays it up and in. In the fourth, Westbrook off the screen. Alley open to Terrence Ferguson. Watch it again. Ferguson, the insane slam. Westbrook, 15 points, 13 rebounds, 15 assists. Eighth straight triple double. Career best and longest streak in the NBA since well, 1968. And, and that is what is impressive. What he brings to the party every single night. Harden might get his 30, but it's Westbrook with the triple double. With the first pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the 76ers select Markel Fultz. It was unbelievable, really. Something I've been dreaming about. Well, he didn't last long there. Been traded to Orlando. Markel Fultz has played just 33 career games. Now, according to Elias, among players to debut with the team that drafted them, that's the fewest by a top overall pick before changing teams in the common draft era that dates back to 1966. So he's had a rough tenure in Philadelphia. His Sixers career started well enough in the summer league, averaged 16 points a game, shot 37.5% in three summer league games. And then a sprained ankle. He missed the rest of summer league for Philadelphia. So the next time he was seen, he looked a lot different. Free throw and shooting forms looked a lot different than he had in practice and in the summer league. His agent told ESPN at the time he had drained uh, some fluid from his shoulder. Then he changed that statement, said he had a cortisone shot. He played just four games before being shut down for the season. So after missing 68, he returned March 26 against the Nuggets, gets the standing ovation, hit a couple jumpers late in the game, mid-range. Fulls had 10 points, 5 of 13 shooting in that game. But now later in the season, moving to April 11 against the Bucks, Fulls gets a triple-double in the last game of the season. Teammates mobbed him after his 10th rebound. Things were looking a lot better for Fultz at that point. But the struggles continued, especially at the foul line. He had that hitch. 
clearly something was wrong. He, he just lost all confidence, also had the, the actual physical injury. Diagnosed uh, with a syndrome, thoracic syndrome, and was traded to the Magic on Wednesday. So Woj is on board with us now to make sense of this. They didn't give him long there, but it had lots of troubles. How does Orlando look at this deal? What are they getting? Well, for Orlando, they, they see this as low risk, high reward. They really didn't give up a lot for him. And listen, he's still 20 years old. And this was a player who was drafted number one overall for a reason. He is immensely skilled. And you know, people who watched him, scouted him in college, there were plenty of people who thought he was the number one pick. Uh, but there are issues that have to be worked out. He has tried to address them in the past year. And he's no longer to the Magic the number one overall pick, the guy they traded another draft pick to get. He's a reclamation project, and that's how they're going to approach this with the Magic. That's a good guy to experiment with, a former top pick, a guy who mentally and physically can get through that. All right, Anthony Davis did not go to the Lakers. I think the Pelicans, like, changed it where they had a recording you have reached the wrong number or something. <laughs> it just didn't work out. And now they announced that he will play, though, because there was a lot of talk about that. Well, they just shut him down. Yeah, they, they had thought about, be, listen, he is the most important asset in that organization, and they're going to trade him at some point. And when they do, what they get back for him is going to really, you know, form the future of what that organization is going to look like. They've got to get back a maximum haul of assets, picks, all the things you want for a star player. And to do that, they got to make sure he's healthy. And, and the concern about him potentially getting injured in these last couple months of the season uh, you know, force them to sit around and think and decide, um, should we just shut them down? The league absolutely did not want to see that to happen. Not a player of Davis's stature. I know today uh, Mickey Loomis, the president of the organization, uh, Del Dempster, GM, Alvin Gentry, sat down, talked, and, and, and decided that he's going to play, and uh, these will probably be his last couple of months in a Pelicans uniform. All right, Woj, well, check your Twitter. LeBron reached out to you about that Westbrook-Simmons trade. Really? Yeah. All right. Coverage. Here's LeBron James on Live Sports Center. In case you can't tell. Thank you. LeBron, you've hit your fair share of buzzer beaters. Uh, the ESPN stats and info put out that was Rondo's first. I think after 12 attempts. So, what was it like seeing that going and then seeing how the the post game, considering all this and being in Boston? You know, man. I think for Rondo, I think it's, uh, he couldn't even dream about that moment to be back here in the Garden and uh, where he won a championship. Where obviously, you know, he has so many memories of being here. Um, and for him to get his hands on the ball at that moment and uh, be able to knock that down, it was, a, it was a storybook ending. Luke said he started to see in the third quarter you look like you're starting to be more like yourself physically. Uh, where did you feel like today, and as the, especially as the game went on, he got stronger? Yeah, as the game went on, I'm, uh, you know, I'm starting to get more and more um, back to myself. You know, every possession, every quarter, uh, every time I take a hit, you know, and I'm able to, uh, you know, nudge it off and keep going. Um, so I'm, I'm working my way back, and I'm, and I'm getting better and better. Um, you know every single minute so in that third quarter I was able to get back to my point forward position um, you know controlling the game finding my shooters they was knocking them down I was able to get into the paint as well a couple of times and um, you know my teammates uh, you know, you know, paid off. Given what happened uh, Tuesday in Indiana I mean do you guys feel like you needed this win a little more this kind of response in this building against this team? Yeah we needed a response you know um, you know it's just a lot that was going on with our ball club in Indiana you know just you know from the energy that you know we didn't need, uh, you know, from, you know, trades and everything. You know, I think it just played a little bit into our heads and um, as, as a collective group. And uh, for us to bounce back like this after the trade deadline, you know, we know this is what we have. This is our group, and uh, it, was a, it was a big step for our team. What is your level of confidence in this group here going forward? Uh, when we're healthy, uh, my level is, is high. Uh, we're a team that's built on depth. And when we're healthy, we're very good, as we saw, as we um, showed the league when, uh, when we were healthy. So uh, we're getting back to that. We're still missing our star point guard and, 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 uh, and Zoe. So, you know, but we're going to hold the four down until he gets back. What did you think of the moves you guys made over the last few days? Um, I think it improves our team. Um, you know, it definitely um, creates more space for, uh, you know, B.I., uh, myself, and for Rondo. Uh, you know, and, and adding a shooter like Mike Muscala, who spreads the floor extremely well, who's going to be guarded by a lot of bigs, and so we keep the bigs out of the paint. And then adding uh, Reggie, who was in the top, you know, five and, and uh, makes and, uh, you know, three, three point percentage. Um, you know, I think that's going to help us out a lot as well. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to these guys, uh, you know, getting to the team and, uh, you know, seeing what we, what, how we can help them and they can help us. You're right, sort of using some wacky seasons in the past where it was up and down, and you found the stride kind of at the right time, we were able to, to ride it. 
um, into a, a postseason berth. Does that inform this season for you at all, the past experiences and you know what the potential still could be for this? this group? I think if I'm if I'm healthy and we're and we're a collective group and um, you know I think we can uh, we can make a push. And that's all it's about. And um, you know, and, and if I continue to, to get in the form, and we continue to to get in the form as well as a, as a collective group, uh, then we will hit a stride. What about the younger guys? I mean, do you kind of see a lock-in mentality from them starting to form tonight? Well, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I think after the deadline, you know, they was able to kind of just to relax. I know. I think it just played a lot with their minds a little bit, and um, you know, and then after the, the three o'clock deadline, um, they knew, and we all knew that this is who we have, and this is who we love to be around. So. Um, they were able to lock in, and uh, you know, even with Bi not shooting the ball extremely well tonight, his defense uh, throughout the night on Kyrie and throughout a lot of those guys was exceptional. And then Cruz's second half performance was uh, uh, was tremendous. So, uh, you know, they're going to be big for our team down the stretch. Did you say anything or, t- or do anything? LeBron's 77th triple double. That's nothing new, or neither are close finishes between the Lakers and the Celtics. That's Irvin Johnson in 1887. Also, 1987. They didn't play in 1887. He's not that old. Uh, January 20, 1995. Same kind of thing happened. The old garden. Nick Van Exel launches the improbable three, the win, and the Lakers got that one. So that's three for the Lakers. Cut it down time. Uh, So you players were not only expendable to your old team, but you were to us. So I'm out, and so are you. Now, you can stare at these names till the cows come home. I always hated that expression. You will never find Anthony Davis. He was not traded to the Lakers or any other team. And Woj is reporting tonight that the Pelicans won't make a healthy AD sit out the rest of the season. Lakers and the Celtics, they played and played right to the final buzzer. LeBron and Kyrie, and there's a Laker fan saying, come on out to L.A., why not? All right, early on, James matched up on Irving. Irving, a little too quick on that one. Later in the first. Irving still doing math, mid-range. Celtics in control early, $5 action. Lakers down 11. James, McGee, can't hit it, and they push it the other way. Hayward, Jalen Brown, he's tall. Boston up 13. Lakers would start the game 0 for the first seven shooting off a pass from James. They talk it out, but then they get it going. James from deep, light a three, and they're still going. James, Venmos to Kyle Kuzma. James gives Lance Stevenson his best chance for success. Contavious Caldwell Pope put one in the air. Now James, Brandon Ingram back and in. Huge dunk by James. He was responsible for the Lakers' last 22 of the first half. Lakers down nine at the half, though. Now we're tied at 80. Third quarter, James, Ingram, open, bucket. Lakers by three. Now Lakers up one. James, Caldwell Pope's open. Lakers up four. Game stayed tight. James launches a three. Lakers hit nine threes in the third quarter. Off memory, that's tied for the most in the quarter in the last 20 seasons. Irving was three of 18 from the floor for the first three, but then he got into his feelings. Under five to go. Boston is down two. Irving zips by Kuzma. Layup good. Boston by four. Here come the Lakers. James, nobody wants him. Launch a three, and it's a one-point game. Celtics right back at it. Irving responds, set himself up for three, and Boston's up four. Now under a minute to go. James nearly loses it. Caldwell Pope back to LeBron, hit a three, tied at 124. Under 30 ticks to go. Lakers down two. Kuzma open there, clapping for it. Got a three, and the Lakers by one. Now here comes Boston the other way. Irving, you knew he'd take it with time winding down, and Boston's back in the lead. Eight seconds to go. Ball gets batted around in here as Inger misses. Horford with the reject. It goes to Rondo. Thank you for my life at the buzzer. Rajon Rondo coming back to Boston, mobbed by his teammates. He gets the ball in the closing ticks and got it off the NBA quick release. The Lakers on the road, 129 to 128. We better talk about this. You know, believe it or not, I always dream like this. You know what I mean? But I couldn't picture it being this sweet coming back on, you know, 13 years in, you know, where it all started. Uh, 
team struggling right now, and it's, I think it's be definitely a confidence boost for us. You know, like I said, we've been through a lot. Uh, we continue to believe in each other. Coach has been doing a hell of a job staying with us, and we just try to stay focused. It was a perfect ending. I mean, I mean, seriously, Rondo is uh, he's an incredible uh, basketball player. He's an incredible person. Uh, you know, he's got his son in here with him before the game, and you can see how much love he has for this city and being in this building. The ball finding him at the end of the game. You know, someone that helped bring this city a championship, uh, and for him to you know knock that down was. For me and Laker fans, it was a beautiful ending to the game. Today. Yeah, man, I thought the basketball gods rewarded the right team. You know, I just I hate to say that, but um, we had a chance to wrap that game up with a rebound, but um, that was kind of the whole night. That was choice sound, but there's nothing like LeBron's sound, and we promise you that's coming soon. But did you know? Did you have any? Are you as stupid as we are? This is the fourth time in Lakers Celtics rivalry that both teams scored at least 125 points in the game, regular season only. Uh, first time that's happened since way back to 1966, a year before the Sonics were invented. Let's get Tim Legler involved. Uh, that's an excellent idea, Kenneth. Thank you. Uh, on that last frame um, on the offensive board and where the Lakers go ahead and win it, you do not see LeBron. He is not in the screen. If they would have lost the game, yeah. LeBron is standing at the foul line, like waiting and not helping at all. That, they win the game. So what happened there at the end for the Lakers to win in Boston tonight? You've heard the expression 50-50 ball, right? Yes. We talk about it all the time in basketball. And sometimes that's literally, Steve, what it comes down to. Two critical plays in this game do not go uh, the Celtics' way. The first is here. LeBron James tries to throw this ball off Al Horford's foot. If that ball hits Al Horford, and goes out of bounds or kicks in any direction, the Lakers lose the game. Instead, a loose ball ends up back in LeBron's hands for a three, and then this one, great play by Horford. He has a chance to grab it. Morris has a chance to grab it. Tatum has a chance to grab it. All three of those guys get their hand on the ball, and if it kicks in any other direction, the Celtics win the game. Instead of bounce somebody here right to Rondo, it seemed like fate for him, of all people, to end up with that basketball in that situation yeah. and to make the game winner. But really, a game of inches. Celtics had won 9 out of 10. They lose a tough one tonight. Lakers played an incredible offensive game and got two huge breaks when they had to have them to keep hope alive that they can make up these last two games and make the playoffs. Impressive effort by Los Angeles. We keep hearing about that locker room being fractured, the trade deadline. Everybody was rumored to be on the way out. In the end, they don't get Anthony Davis. For them to show up the way they did tonight, I think, speaks to their future. Great sign tonight. They lose by 42 to Indiana the other night. And we were like, is this going to be a train wreck the rest of the year? The trade doesn't happen. And now LeBron's got to play with these guys the rest of the year. This is a great sign. They showed effort and energy tonight. There was a bounce in their step. I still think Brandon Ingram is the most affected by all of this. He doesn't seem like himself. But to get this win in Boston could turn this thing around and at least let you know they're going to compete for Boston. I feel really good about where they are relative to where they were the first six, eight weeks of the season. Right. They have found a rhythm, found a flow. Tatum, Brown, Rozier, much better than they were at the start of the year. Kyrie is Kyrie. This is a team now that looks like they're clicking and getting it together at the right time. The top of the East, we know, is going to be brutal, Steve. You'd have to agree, though. The East got a lot tougher today, a lot tighter, no question. Let's take a look at some of the moves made in the Eastern Conference. Let's start with the Milwaukee Bucks. Nikola Mirotic. Fits right in with Milwaukee, ranks fifth in the NBA in catch and shoot three pointers per 100 possessions. Bucks have attempted more catch and shoot threes than any team in the league, and Miritich is shooting 38% on those catch and shoot opportunities. Then there's the Raptors acquiring Mark Gasol. He adds a new dimension to Toronto's offense. Gasol had 461 touches that start out of the high post. That's the most in the NBA. Raptors currently ranked 24th in the league in high post touches. Gasol can score or pass from the elbow. He has 30 assists from that high post this season. So that was the move that the Raptors made. And then there are your Philadelphia 76ers. Got Tobias Harris from the Clippers. Harris will help space the floor for Philadelphia. Harris is shooting an NBA best 48% off the dribble threes this season. The Sixers currently rank in the bottom half of the league on off the dribble threes, and he certainly will help there. So legs, the three other teams besides Boston that make moves, and you know Boston gets a bit of a win because they got a shot at AD now after the season's over, but that won't help them in May and June here. Who helped themselves the most when you think about maybe the Eastern Conference Final and the NBA Final? I think without question it's Philadelphia. And it's Tobias Harris. We can start with him because he fits in perfectly because of his ability to stretch the floor at the four spot. But he's a lot more than that. He can post. He can slash. He can take you off the dribble. 
This is what he does right here. He's going to get a ton of trail threes playing with Ben Simmons, who uses his speed to draw people. He'll get a ton of threes on plays like that. If that's a beat in the paint, he's going to draw extra guys. He can respace, spot up, slide up, knock it down. Uh, he's going to play off of you know, guys drawing attention to the paint. This is what they had. Mike Muscala, it's not a knock on him. He is not Tobias Harris on these catch-and-shoot threes. Wilson Chandler played a lot of minutes at the four spot for Philly. Again, not the same player. The other thing both of those guys struggle with is if they didn't have a shot on the closeout, the play's pretty much over. They're going to have to swing it. Tobias Harris can then pump fake, put it down. If you close out hard, he's athletic enough to get to the rim and finish. He's 26 years old. He's averaging 21 points a game. Tremendous pickup. Now, the big question, Steve, though, is going to be yeah. chemistry, man. You've got five guys all averaging over 17 points a game. Right. Four guys in that 20-point area. It's not going to be easy to blend in in 20-something games before the playoffs. But if they can do it, this is the second most talented starting lineup in the league besides Golden State. There you go. And we'll get a quick look at the 76ers. Be a fun game tomorrow night against the Nuggets right here on ESPN. That's Tim Legler minus the lab.